In this video I'm going to upgrade my maxi fan controller from this one and upgrade it to the newer version which is 100% compatible. But not only that, but I'm going to remote control this wirelessly. Even though this is January in the upper midwest, you know, we normally have snow on the ground this time of the year, but gosh, we've had 50 degree weather for the last few days. No snow on the roof of the RV, so I decided I'm going to come out here and install this and do the video. And like most of my projects, I have a web page that details the project. And the link I provide will give you the web page. And when you follow the link, you'll go to the web page for the fan. And the first page has a lot of background information. Uh, shows some pictures of the different parts and things. As well as the schematic. And when you go to page 2, this is actually the build instructions. Here is the bill of materials with all the part sources and options that are shown in different colors. And it shows you how to use two different types of receivers that you might get. And then here's the final assembly instructions and the power options. This PDF, when you click on that, it will give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to build the board, where to place all the parts, and so on. And how you must modify the enclosure by cutting little tabs out or the drill hole for the LED and finally how to reassemble it and how to program it. So there's a, quite a bit of information in here and so I encourage you if you want to build this project to go to this web page. And here's a new style thermostat and since I've actually been working on this project for a while I've already put the LED in and I've already cut the hole uh, for the switch but essentially to disassemble this you just get under here with a little screwdriver or something and pop the cover. And then you have the circuit board, which I've already removed the two screws. That comes out. Then we have the membrane, which is the switch membrane. And then we have the cover, and I've actually put the LED in here and glued it in. And here we have our project all laid out. And we have the old fan thermostat. Uh, disassembled and the old one is two parts basically you've got the cover and you've got the circuit board. Now, there's a difference between the old and new circuit board the new one has basically just an etched in uh, switch pattern and that corresponds to these little carbon fiber uh, contacts and this membrane sits on here and then as you just push the button it makes contact in contrast, the older style uh, has actually tactile switches. And so when we looked at this and we look at the reverse of this circuit board, you can see that I've replicated the four switch contacts on the board that I made. And finally, uh, we have a 9 volt battery and a battery connector. And even though this is going to be powered by 12 volts, we can use a 9 volt battery uh, to test to make sure everything works well before we go into the RV. And what makes this project possible is this receiver. This is a four channel receiver and you can see how small it is. Unfortunately I have to use surface mount technology because with this membrane as it fits on here I didn't want a bunch of components poking through. And also you can see there's a cavity here and that cavity fits over the contacts for the modular connector and also there's two small resistors here and here that fit on the side board and you can see those here the same thing on this old board here and here and unfortunately these are smaller than I like to work with for uh, projects because they're a little harder to handle there's no really any way around it because they got to be small enough uh, for this membrane uh, to fit over. And even though this is surface mount technology, I've made components as large as I can. I found the largest parts that I could. And with the exception of these two, these are all what's known as 1206, which are here and here and here. And I've actually even increased the size of the pads to make them easier to solder. 
Now I'm not going to go through a step-by-step -step procedure in putting the parts on this board because you can go to my website and download the documentation package and it'll have a step-by-step -step drawing on what part goes where and my recommended sequence of installing the parts because if you put big parts in before you put the little parts in you may not be able to get the soldering iron in there. So we're going to just kind of populate this board. Okay, now we've got all of the surface mount uh, devices in here. Basically everything but the four channel receiver. Now the first piece of advice is I would buy extra components, especially the SMD components, because sooner or later you're going to get one in backwards, you're going to break one, or it's going to go flying across the room and you're not going to be able to find it. So they're not that expensive. It's just easier to buy a couple extras. And one thing I did discover is there's a little difference in the receiver boards. And I'm going to show you a close-up of the two boards. We have one board that has all the pins kind of towards the right, and the other board all the pins towards the left. This is the one we want because the footprint of the circuit board will not work with this one. And if you go to my website and if you look at the parts list, I show this board. Now there's no guarantee that at some point manufacturers may ship these boards and not these. And from my website you can go to OSH Park and there's a receiver adapter board that I built for this project. This adapter board will allow you to use the other receiver with the project. And at some point if the only receiver board is available is the other board then I will update the project for this board. But for now if you get the wrong board in, you can just buy the adapter and you can use that. And so I have soldered the receiver board on and as a last step, I have put the antenna on the last pin here. And now we want to program the receiver. Once we're done with that, we can assemble it. And you can see I've got the device powered by a 9 volt battery, just temporarily. There is a switch here and this is the programming switch. So actually programming is three steps. Number one, we have to clear everything. And to clear it, we'll hold the button down, then turn power on. And you can see the LED there, let it blink four times. Turn power off. That clears everything. That clears the mode and that clears the buttons. Now we want this thing to be momentary. Depress this again and hold it, turn it on, and let it blink once, twice, three times, and then let go turn it off. So now all the channels are cleared and this is set up for momentary. And I'll have to explain how this button behavior is. Channel 1 is showing up as A, channel 2B, channel 3C, and channel 4D. And that corresponds also to channel 1, 2, 3, 4 here. However, that does not line up with the channels here. So on is channel 4, open is channel 3, off is channel 1, and close is channel 2. And we don't want that. We would rather have channel 1, 2, 3, 4. So the way we have to program this is to program this for channel 1, we'll have to use button 3, and so on. And if you go to my website, there's a little cheat sheet that shows you what channel goes to what. So now, to program the channels, we can turn this on, and we depress the button after we turn the power on. And remember, before when we set the mode, we depressed the button before we turn it on. You'll see it, it blink once, twice, three times, and four times. Okay, that's channel one, two, three, and four. So we want to program channel one here with channel three here. So we push this down for it to blink once, then we push this button t until it blinks twice. And you can hear the relay turn on and off. Then channel two, we want to program for the channel four button. So again, we hold this down it blinks twice for channel 2. We hold this button down and blinks twice rapidly and then that's programmed. Then channel 3 we want here. So again three times and then press that until it blinks twice. And of course channel 1 we want to be on 4 so we hold this down until it blinks four times and then we depress this and hold it down until that blinks twice. Each one of these channels will hold up to about 50 transmitter configurations. So you could make a mistake and program channel 3 and channel 4 on the same button or channel 3 on two different buttons 
or any of those kind of weird combinations. So then you got to start all over with a step one where you got to clear it first and then you got to set it back to momentary and then come back here and program the channels. So it's kind of weird but that's the way it works. So now we should be able to have each button close the relay. We're done. So now we just reassemble the front panel and we take our membrane and just set it in the front panel and as we press down there are little pins in here that pierce the membrane and then there are corresponding holes for those pins in the circuit board and we have to turn the circuit board around and I put the JST connector on here just simply because I'm taking this apart a lot because it's the prototype plus I'm doing all this video and everything so you may not need to put the JST connector in so I didn't actually put that in the bill of materials but you can buy one if you decide that's what you want and there's a little notch in here for where the wires to go and we just screw the cover back on and we have to get power to the device 12 volts there's two ways to do that number one is we can tap into the terminal I have in here as we saw in the construction phase and it'll even run a 9 volt battery. I've just got this battery here for now. Or we can use this small adapter and this just adds 12 volts to the outside two terminals because these terminals are not used in here. And just pay attention, this is thermostat end, this is fan end. If you get them reversed then you're not going to power the device, you're going to send voltage the wrong way. So we want to plug the short one in the thermostat and the device into here and then we would wire 12 volts into there and it would also give us 12 volts so that basically is the two ways we can power the device and by the way you want this connector to be rg11 six pin on both sides all six pins populated straight through and there are various different types of jumpers so you make sure you get the right one and now the project is completed pilot light shows that we have 12 volts to the thermostat and we can depress one of these switches or the remote.